So as much fun as it has been drawing these two-dimensional triangles, chances are you are not watching this playlist to draw two-dimensional triangles. You want to draw, or a better term for it, you want to render a three-dimensional scene. However, I have a secret to tell you regarding three-dimensional scenes. Three-dimensional scenes are still made up of triangles, and our trick is to take a three-dimensional triangle and turn it into a two-dimensional triangle so that we can draw a two-dimensional triangle. When we render a three-dimensional scene, all we're doing is rendering two-dimensional triangles exactly the same as we've been rendering two-dimensional triangles up to this point in the playlist. I have here in the background Autodesk Maya. I have this rectangular-looking box on the screen. I'm going to bring our view of it like so. And, and if you can see, the back of the box looks much further away than the front of the box. Okay, Things that are further away from us tend to vanish to a vanishing point. In fact, if I put a vanishing point way out here, and maybe this would continue on forever and ever. If you stand at the end of a road, it looks like the road goes forever and ever, but eventually the sides of the road will converge to a point here. Same thing with this box. And even though this box looks like it's 3D, we're still drawing two-dimensional triangles. Okay, even Maya that says it's dealing with quads, which is a polygon with with four vertices instead of three. Maya still use tri uses triangles. Maybe I'll prove that to you later. But here's one vertex. Here's another vertex. 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 Vertex down here. Vertex down here. Let me draw the triangles for you. And these are two-dimensional triangles. Connect the dots. And it looks like a three-dimensional triangle, does it not? Maya stores these triangles using three-dimensional values, but in the end, Maya has to render a two-dimensional triangle. There's another triangle, and another triangle. So hopefully you're getting an idea that, yes, it's still two-dimensional triangles. We just have to do some magic. It's not magic. We'll look at how we do this, but essentially we have to do some magic that says, well, whatever is closer to the camera will be larger than whatever is away from the camera, but in the end, it's still two-dimensional triangles. So to help us understand how we convert a three-dimensional representation of a game into a two-dimensional image, I have built this tool. Again, all we're drawing are two-dimensional triangles. However, everything else we do in our scene, if we're doing a game, for example, our artificial intelligence calculations, our physics calculations, all of our calculations will still be in 3D. But in the end, when the renderer has to render what the player sees, the renderer has to convert all that 3D-ness into two dimensions. And so I've built this tool to help us understand that. You've probably heard of the famous matrices model, view, and projection. But, but I think model, view, and projection, those terms are a little bit ambiguous because it doesn't really tell us what the matrices are doing. Instead, I like to call this model to world, world to view, view to projection, because that's exactly what each of these matrices are doing. The matrices transform our model into the world, and then we hit it with another matrix, which moves the world into the view. Then we hit that with another matrix, which transforms the view into a projection. And the projection is basically what takes our world and squishes it to two-dimensional space so that we can render the scene. I'm going to open the snipping tool and grab this for later reference and put this off to the side. Now you may be thinking, matrices, what, what about matrices? I've heard matrices work with computer graphics, and if you haven't, well, they do. Uh, essentially, these are matrices that you're looking at. They're four-dimensional. They do some math on our vertices. We saw vertices earlier in the video with with Maya, and I was showing you all the vertices, but we've sent down plenty of vertex information to OpenGL in two dimensions. However, now we're going to do it in three dimensions, and we're going to use a four-dimensional matrix to basically position everything so that we can get a two-dimensional image. If you're extremely curious 
as to how these matrices work, how the math works. You don't like to just call it magic, but actually want to understand how these matrices work. I highly encourage you to go see my game engine programming playlist. I go through all the details of how matrices perform transformations, all the vector math and that sort of thing. Okay, I'm going to check this box right here that says show world. And voila, we have a world. And the world is 10 by 10. If I grab my drawing tool, you'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then going the other way, goes up to 10 as well. And I've only drawn this 10 by 10 unit, but realistically, the world goes on forever that way, forever that way, and forever that way. Our world has a center. The center is right here. You see from here, it's five units that way, five units that way, five units that way, and also five units into your face. So, so this is the origin or the center of our world. Let's look at the X, Y, and Z axis. The X axis I'll do in red. The positive X axis is this direction. The Y axis is this direction. I haven't drawn a grid in the Y direction, just in the X, Z world here. And speaking of Z, the positive Z is this direction. So this is our world. And when you do a three-dimensional scene, you have this thing called the world. And we like to place our objects into the world. Let's place an object into the world. I want to say box, show yourself. This is a box. It's in our scene. I want to position the box into the world. You can see right now the box is sitting pretty much on the origin. The center of the box is lined up perfectly with our origin of the world. I want to change the size of the box. Let's scale it in the Y. You can see I have X. Y, Z as far as scale, and as I drag these sliders around, you'll see the values inside of this matrix change. This matrix represents the model to world matrix for this particular box. So even though you may not understand what's going on in here, that's not too big of a worry. What you need to understand is I'm doing a scale, a rotate, and a translate. Let's look at all three of those separately. All of these combine to make one matrix, which we apply to this box down here, and the box will behave accordingly. So let's squish it, scale it down a little bit on the Y, and we can scale it a little bit on the Z. Maybe we can make it a little bit fatter in the X, like so. Let's rotate the box. This is rotate around the X, rotate around the Y, rotate around the Z. So if we look at the X axis again, remember the X axis is this direction. So if I rotate around the X, you can see the box rotates around the X. Let's rotate around the Z a little bit there. And now we'll do a translate, which is the same as move the box into the world. So let's move the box in the negative vector X direction. We'll push the box out there a ways. So this is the model to world transformation matrix. If it bugs you to look at these numbers, just think of the matrix as an operation we perform on this box right here, and it will move the box into the world, going back to our original diagram. We just did the model to world matrix, the model to world matrix for the box. Let's do a model to world matrix for another object. So let's do a sphere. I can click here and say show the sphere. And we have separate scaling, rotation, and translate for the sphere. This is the model to world matrix for the sphere. The ones down the diagonal mean there's pretty much nothing going on. We're multiplying all the positions by one. No big deal. Let's do something a little more interesting. Let's squish it in the X. Let's rotate it around the Y. You can see it's a little bit thinner now as far as our perspective goes. And then, same as the box, let's push it out in the X direction like that. So I can actually fly our camera around. You can kind of see we have this blimpish looking sphere and the box and they're intersecting. And that's kind of, that's kind of cool, actually. That's, I spent a lot of time building this tool. I think it'll help you. Definitely helped me understand what's going on here. So now that we have the model to world matrix for both of these shapes, we have the one for the box, the one for the sphere. They're definitely different. We're doing different scalings and rotations and translations for each one of them. The next job we need to do is move the world to our view. And the view is our camera looking down the negative Z axis. So I'm going to click here. You'll see a camera shows up. 
I'm sorry I didn't outline this, but if I did outline it by hand, hopefully you can see that we have this crude looking camera. Right, here's the edges of it and so on and so forth. We have a camera. It is looking down the negative Z axis, negative Z axis. And so if I was sitting in this camera looking this direction, I'd probably see nothing out here. In fact, I can go as far as saying fix the eye to the camera position. So when I click this box, what we see will be what the camera actually sees. It'll snap our viewpoint to right here looking down the negative Z axis. So watch, click, and we see nothing except my scribbles on the screen. There's nothing in front of the camera. So what we want to do instead is move this entire world in front of the camera. I want the camera to be able to see all this. So I want to rotate the entire world in front of the camera. Now if you're playing a first person game or you're used to first person viewpoints in any game, whenever you move around the world, what's actually happening is the world is moving around you. Okay, you thought you were lazy to begin with. It's it's literally the, the the world revolves around you. And as humans, we tend to naturally think that the world revolves around us anyway. So hopefully this isn't too unnatural. I have these parameters here for this view matrix. What happens with this matrix is we combine it with this one for the sphere. And we combine the view matrix or the world to view matrix with the box. And that will move both of these shapes to where we want them to be. Well, I don't want them to be out here. I want them to be in front of the camera. And so the parameters generally for the function that I'll show you later that we call the parameters are where do you want your eye in regard to world coordinates? What do you want to look at? And what do you want to be up? So we want the y-axis to always point up so we're not feeling like we're upside down. For now, you can kind of ignore this. I'm not going to play with it in this video. Let's focus on the eye point and the look at. Right now, the camera its coordinate system is lined up perfectly with the origin and axes of the world. But instead, what I want to do is rotate the world here. I want my eye to remain at 0, 0 as far as the world is concerned. But I want it to look at, let's say, negative 1.5. Somewhere out here, I want the camera to look at negative 1.5 in the X. Right now, the camera is looking at negative 1.5 on the Z, so right about here. So all I have to do to bring these shapes around is say, instead of looking at negative 1.5 on the Z, look at negative 1.5 on the X. Watch what happens as I grab this slider. I'm going to move this slider down to negative 1.5. You can see the world shifting there. The world's coordinate system is red. The camera's coordinate system is, I guess it looks like it's white. Maybe it's green. I can't remember exactly what color I did, the, did there. But as far as the world's coordinate system is concerned, we're looking at negative 1.5, negative 1.5. So negative 1.5, negative 1.5. This is where the camera is looking in regards to the world's coordinate system. But I want to look at our shapes. So let's bring this C value down to 0. And you can see now the camera is looking at exactly what we want to look at, the sphere and the box. And did you notice how the world revolved around the camera? The camera was stationary. The world moved around the camera. So now when I click this box, fix eye to camera position, we'll see the box and the sphere exactly how we want to. Click. There we go. Isn't that nice? But not only can you slice, you can dice. I said earlier in this video that we did a model to world transformation, and we run that model to world on each one of the models separately. The box has a separate model to world matrix from the sphere model to world matrix. But then they both share the exact same world to view matrix right here. We applied this matrix to the sphere and the box after applying their respective model to world matrices. But there's one more matrix here I need to talk about. It's the view to projection. As I fly around here, you'll see that our world is still three-dimensional. Okay? You see a three-dimensional scene. And yet, for our camera or our hardware to render this scene appropriately, we need to take this entire scene and squish it to a two-dimensional space. 
basically shove it all flat in it. Like we we take a big block of steel over here and just push it forward against another block of steel here, and the whole thing will squish into a two-dimensional space. Well, I have this slider hanging out right here that does exactly that. I haven't shown you here in the UI the actual view to projection matrix. I didn't have enough room to put it up here, but that matrix is still out there. In fact, if it helps you feel better, I'll draw a little matrix out here, and we'll say this is the view to projection matrix that we shall apply after the world to view matrix, and then after the model to world matrix for the respective shapes. Watch, I'm going to grab the slider, and you see the world smashes to a two-dimensional view there. Okay, If I come out here, you can still see the 3D-ness, but it's it's actually two dimensions. Okay, It's, it's a two-dimensional scene. That's how we we convert three-dimensional triangles, our mathematical representation, from 3D to 2D so that we can render a two-dimensional scene. But it's looking very flat here, isn't it, if I can get perfectly out to the side here. We have definitely flattened that scene. And then furthermore, watch, if I put our view right here, when I click this, again, this will place our actual viewpoint to what the camera sees, and you'll see that from, it actually aligns quite nice. Watch. Click, 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 click. Two dimensions. Two dimensions. Ah, so there you go. That is the model view projection matrix. This tool is actually a lot of fun to play with. You can see, oh, we project down. Our three-dimensional world gets flattened. I wish I could do that with my stomach. That'd be so cool. Anyway, all right. Model view projection. We're done.